We are in the final week of this prompt pull from the coffee cup. We started this at the first of the month, working on envelopes. This was week one, interdepartmental envelope. Week two was two plain small envelopes. Week three was a couple of letter size envelopes or legal size envelopes. This is what we are going to create. This pocket is what we are going to create from envelopes this week. But first, let me introduce my channel. I've pulled a bunch of scrap paper that has accumulated from <clears throat> excuse me, gel press prints since we started these coffee cup prompts. And I thought this would be a good project to use up some of those scraps. So I will be collaging this piece of watercolor paper and I will catch up with you once that's done. We now have completely covered that piece of 11 by 15 inch paper, and I believe that's 120 pound, no, it's 140 pound paper. I just got a glimpse of the pad, and I want to drop that uh, color kind of into the background a little bit, so I am hitting this with some gesso and my paintbrush. Just lightly going over the top, and I'm liking the way that it picks up the highlights of the paper, meaning that anywhere there's a wrinkle in that paper, that gesso is collecting on that wrinkle. And I, I like the way that looks. It got a little bold or heavy on this right-hand side. I had a dried out um, baby wipe. I just sprinkled some water on and kind of removed that boldness over there on that right-hand side. So now that that is dry, I've grabbed a bottle of Van Dyke Brown India ink and I'm dotting the ink onto the paper 
I will squirt that with my water bottle and hold that up and just allow that to drip and run and embrace those drips on this paper. Looks like I missed a little spot there, right there. So I'm going to put some more of that ink and kind of get that continuity going across the page. And I think that does it. So I shall let that dry. I'll actually speed up that drawing a little bit by bringing in my trusty ancient blow dryer and now that that's dry I am going to begin to construct the pocket so the first thing I want to do is score a half inch down the short edge And I'll just train that fold. Hit it with my bone folder. And now I will have my paper with that half inch being removed. So once I folded that over, I will have the paper to accommodate that half inch fold. Now I want to create a half inch score on the long edge, but <clears throat> my scoreboard isn't long enough to do that. So I will score it as far as I can get it and then turn the paper and score the other end. And I suppose that you could do this without, without the scoreboard and just fold it to the eye to about a half inch, use a ruler, but I have the scoreboard and it's easier for me. So now I have it scored on both sides. <clears throat> to create the pocket, I want to remove the corner here because that's going to be bulky. So where the, that corner intersected or where those folds intersected, I will remove that. And on what is going to be the front of this pocket, I will remove that half inch fold all the way. And there's that pesky fly again. That, that fly has been with me on each of these videos. I've, I've finally decided to name him. So that is Roger. <clears throat> now I'll just angle up those edges. And that's how that main construction of that pocket will be. Now to get the flap, I need to take out another section of this on the folded side. So we'll cut down the height of our closure or our flap. So I'm going to pull my scoreboard out. And I want to score that the width that I want my flap. And I'm going to go, go all the way across because on one side... I will be removing the piece, and on the other side, it will become my flap. So on the folded side, that will be removed. I <laughs> see the fly walk across my camera. Oh, my goodness, I can't get rid of these. this thing. He's, he's at the end of, of the season. He's made his way into my shop, and he likes to hover around where I am. Right, so now I'm cutting that out of the folded side.
and now scoring that flap. And I'm going to score it where I want it to fold and an eighth of an inch on either side to give me a little bend. So there are my additional score lines. Okay, so that is going to work nicely, but I want to create some angle on the edge of that flap. So I'll just pull out my playing card that I have notched to the side there, and we'll use that as our template. And it looks like I haven't cut that exactly to the center, so let me clean that up first. And now we'll put that card up there for our template and notch off that edge. So there is the construction of our pocket. So that half inch fold along the two sides gives us a little room in the pocket so it's not just a real tight pocket. And now I am measuring to get the halfway mark and I'm marking it because that is where I'm going to put my closure. So I will mark it on the flap and poke a hole. Now I will close that, grab my ruler, and make sure I'm in line, and choose where my next piece of closure is going to be, and poke my hole through there. I'm pulling out my brads to attach my closure, and I have a piece of cardstock from a granola box that I am pulling in to punch and I will punch four circles out of that granola box. That punch looked a little big, so I'm grabbing a smaller one. There we go. So there's one. Two, three, four. So now I have four little card board or card stock circles and I want to get those colored so they will match but those will be my two closure pieces and let me pull in some folk art gold paint and I'm using now I have decided that I will use yellow ochre. So let me pull in that yellow ochre paint first and just get each of these painted up with that yellow ochre. And this granola box absorbs this paint really, really fast and it dries really fast. So now that they're dry, I've taken them to my hot shot with a crackle embossing folder and ran them through the hot shot and I will define those marks with some of this uh, luster paste or luster wax. It is actually luster wax and I was just looking at the jar to see if I could tell who it was by. Oh, it's by Sissix. So I will put that over in my, on my website in my Amazon shop so you can find it if you would like to use some of it. And as you know, when you buy off of Amazon, I do make a small commission on that. It's very small. It does not increase the price that you use, but it does help me and my channel. So I'll glue those two together 
and hit the outside edges with the vintage photo ink, distress oxide ink. And now I want to poke a hole in the center of each of those little closures and we'll attach them to the folder with the brad. I think that color looks good. So we'll stick that brad through the center. We'll stick one right here in the middle of the folder and we'll put one on the folder flap. So now when that closes, I'll come up with some type of lace to lace crisscross around those two little circles and we'll have a nice little closure there on the outside. Just trimming up anything that I see that I may not have removed in the first round of trim. Now I want to see how that luster wax will work as as a stencil through the stencil. Now it looks like that will work fine, but I may want to try just a plain gold paint first to see how that does. And we'll stencil on just some random letters. And while that works, it doesn't really show up, so I will fill it in with a little bit of that luster wax. I think that looks a little better. And we'll just go with the luster wax for the stenciling. I've spread some out there on my work table, and I am utilizing a cosmetic sponge just to apply that. And I like the way this looks. It gives it a little bit of bling, if you will. And a little bit of interest. So we'll get that done both on the front and the back of this pocket. Go around the outside edges with that luster wax. Kind of gild those edges up a bit. Hit it again with the vintage photo to give us that antique feel. I think this was a pretty good use of some of my scraps. What do you think? Now I need to do something with the inside of this flap. And to begin with, I'm just going to hit it with some of that yellow ochre paint. Just checking to make sure I'm not bleeding over onto the front. But we'll get a good coat of that yellow ochre around the edges here. Because even though the inside of this is not going to be seen, I'd like to have finished pieces. And I think that comes from my time in jewelry fabrication. You know, you always wanted the back of your piece of jewelry to look as good as the front of your piece of jewelry. So I kind of have carried that over into mixed media. If I have something that I am putting on a canvas, I want the back of the canvas to look as nice or as clean as the front. Likewise with all of my mixed media projects. I like the inside to be 
as nice as the out, or at least as finished as the outside. So I put some gold paint with that cosmetic sponge on top of the yellow ochre, and I am now going to put just a dictionary page on the inside to finish off the inside of this pocket. Just using my glue and water mixture. If you want to know what that ratio is, I'll link the video up above. That video shows you not only the ratios for your homemade Mod Podge, but also for homemade gesso and homemade texture paste. And it defines the cost um, as to what it costs to make your own versus what it costs to go buy it pre-made. So there we are with the dictionary pages glued down. One of the things I always used to do on my jewelry when I was setting a stone is I would engrave, or not engrave, but I would use my jeweler saw to cut either a bird or a feather or something into the bottom of the bezel. So when you had that piece of jewelry or that necklace, you turned it over and you could see the back of that stone through whatever I had cut into the bottom of that bezel. And it was kind of your little secret that when you wore it, you knew, you knew it was there, but the person that was looking at you didn't. So that was kind of my thing. But COVID kind of took that down, and I haven't really activated my fabrication part of my studio again. I plan on it when I quit this corporate rat race, rat race, which is coming soon. I'm looking at April to end my career. And there that is glued, all glued together. I will just clamp it down to make sure that that is tightly held together so that glue has a good opportunity to really catch. And now I need to work on what I am going to close this with. And then we will be finished with this month of envelopes, which I told you when we began at the very beginning, envelopes is kind of a nemesis of me, and I hope you weren't expecting one of those envelope journals that is a dozen envelopes that flip this way and flip that way. I just, I can't get that together, so you will have to bear with me in my, what my version of utilizing envelopes is. So I've pulled out this little piece of leather and we will just wrap that around the top one and secure it with a couple of wraps and then wrap it around the bottom and back across the top and we'll cut this off. And then I am going to punch out a couple of little pieces to glue onto the end of those strings to give those a little bit of interest and we will be finished with so let's get those two little stars painted and I painted them in gold and I had two stars and I glued them together with the little piece of leather in between them so one on each end, and that gives me that little 
little definition at the end there. And I'm going to let this sit overnight for that glue. And now the following morning, here I am. It's glued nice and tight. There's the back, there's the front. Open it up, there's the inside. So that completes this envelope project, creating this pocket, which I think would be great for Happy Mail. It would be great to include in a packet to someone. It would be great to store uh, little embellishments that I make. If you would like to share your work or see what others have done, come on over to our Facebook group. It's linked right here and either share your work or take a look at what others have done. You can find my Amazon storefront on my website, which is twoolcrowsmixedmedia.com right here. Thank you for being here. Let's share the photos. When I think about yesterday My, oh my My, oh my A kiss and so I did Once again, appreciate your participation over in the Facebook group. Appreciate your comments and your likes. Thumbs up here. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and join me for next month's poll, which who knows what that's going to be. And if you haven't participated thus far, the playlist for the coffee cup prompts is right here. Bye for now.